Hello everybody, I'm back again on my channel about the in and out tennis device. In my last video we tested the accuracy of the in and out device. In this video I will now show you how the data from the in and out device can be used to produce a professional match analysis. After a match you simply download the data file from the in and out server. And now you can evaluate a new set. In the first step, the program deletes the data from the former set and loads the newest data. Next, you have to tell the system who started serving. And then you enter the nicknames of the players and uh, the result of the set. If everything is correct, um, the calculation will show green. Thereafter follows a new calculation. And at last, you have to tell the system if you change sites and recalculate again. This is really to remove any inconsistency and the system show then the video editor screen. You can now load the video from the in-out data card. The video is automatically synchronized with your data. The video editor allows you now to review sequences of the set, see the placement of each shot and correct data if you do not agree with the in-out decision or detect any errors in the calculation of the system. To demonstrate what we can do, we start with the first service. We key in one to see the first service. Then for John, the return was out. Then the next service from John was not returned. And Jen, we can now see this in the video. So Chris, first service. John is playing out. And uh, the next service from Chris. John, as we have seen, is playing in the net. It's now in the net. And he is playing a missing ball to the other side. Next, we want to see the last 30 seconds of the game. Therefore, we can see this is point 33, the last point of the game. We select point 33, go to shot. And immediately the last 30 seconds are starting. We want to see this a little bit bigger. And now the last 30 seconds start with a service from Chris from the advantage side. So we are in the rally. And the last ball from Chris is landing in the net. John has won this game. You can see that at the end of the game, which ends with six to two points, something cannot be correct. We count in the way two to zero is 30 love, or two to two is 30 all. Six to two cannot be correct. And we may, if we want, try to find the error, although for the statistics this is not important. I will show you now in slow motion where the error occurred. Chris is serving. John is returning the ball and look at it, it's out. And Chris is playing out. We'll play it now on the graphic. This is service from Chris. 
John is playing out and Chris is playing out. Thus, the point from Chris was invalid and therefore we have to correct it. Invalid, we key in two. And now the result is correct. With a video editor you can review all sorts of shots. If you want to see the volleys of Chris, you key in one. You see the shot number, key in the shot number and go to shot. And then you can review the shot. Volleys and smash are shown together and you see here the smash of Chris. Let's now start analyzing the set with the emphasis on John. What could he have done better from a tactical point of view and what training needs can be identified? Looking at the summary, it strikes immediately that John's first service was to 80%, 87% in, but he won only three points at own service. That means only 20% of the possible points, including the rally. Whereas he got 35% of the points if Chris served and 38% and in the rally. If we now look at the detailed data of the service, you can see that John's uh, service speed was okay, but he served to 82% uh, on the body. That means in the middle of the court, allowing Chris immediately to build up pressure. We can see here an example of this. On the graphic, you see John serves in the middle and Chris is making directly the point. You see this now in the little video. John's service in the middle and without difficulties, Chris made the point. John should have taken a much higher risk with his service and avoid to serve on the body. This is clearly a point for his training. A very good option is the slice white close to the line as demonstrated here by this young lady. This service is very difficult to return and even if you return it, the young lady can go for the third ball. Only a fast crossbow or the long line ball is a good solution against this. But both the slice service and the return needs a lot of training. Before we analyze the returns, a word about the colors. These indicate to what extent you achieved your targets. Red stands for not achieved, light green for good, and dark green for optimal. You can change the standard targets for men or women according to your requirements in the expert screen. If we now look at the data for the returns, we see it confirmed that Chris has taken advantage of John's weak service, returned the service of John with very high speed and got with the return four direct points, which are nearly 30%. On the other side, John made three return errors and played uh, three times in the so-called death zone near the T-line which bears a high risk that the next ball will be dead. Let's look at, at an example for this. Chris serves, John plays in the death zone and the ball is dead. The death zone in red is the zone from 35% to 60% of the length of the court and 15 to 85% of the width of the court. Thus, the zone is much smaller as in this schematic drawing. If you play into this zone and your shot is not really fast, your oppo opponent should attack and try to make the point. If he hesitates, you can win the ball. 
Anyway, the ball should be dead. Therefore, it's called Death Zone. This is part of a zone model I adapted in my program. The model was developed by Richard Schönborn, the former national tennis trainer in Germany. If you play in the green or yellow zones, you may force errors, forced errors or get winners. If you play into the white zone with normal speed, you have to hope for unforced errors of your opponents. But let's have a look on the data of the rally. Crit shows a very strong performance. Nearly all indicators are dark green. His balls were longer, faster and with less net clearance. 85% were in and 44% in the green or yellow area. With this, he made 12 active, po active points, such as winners, drop shots, or forced errors of John. These are 67% of the balls in the green or yellow area. A very strong performance. Chris has a much higher ranking and is reflected in the results. John, on the other side, played only 26% in the green and yellow area, which is too low and he got only three active points, or 30% of the balls played in this area. John, on the other side, played too many times on Chris' very strong forehand, 63%. Or Chris moved around the backhand and made the point with the forehand. John should have taken a higher risk to avoid playing on the strong forehand, as we can see in this example. Chris is serving his second service, John is playing a good return and now he has a chance but he is playing in the death zone and the ball is dead. He should play more with his backhand close to the line. The result of the pressure on John's backhand was that he made too many backhand and or unforced errors and Chris could make too many active points with his forehand. John made his three active points with long line shots. That is something he should build on to use these shots in the right moment, as we can see in this example. Chris was very successful with his drop shots. As you can see, he made four drop shots with a success rate of 75%. John, as you can see in this example, is fast enough to play the ball back, but he is not able to convert it into a point. Here we see a second example. Again, you will see he is fast enough, but not capable of making the point. We are coming now to the summary for John. The score shows if you have achieved your targets and set in the expert screen. If the score is below 100, you have not achieved the targets and there are areas for improvements and need for training. The first point is the service. John should increase the risk for first and second service. Practice to place the service white or T. Avoid body and playing on the stronger forehand or backhand because the service is not fast enough if he plays against a strong player. The next point is the return, which also needs improvement. John should aim to play at the weaker side of his opponent, in this case the backhand, and avoid the dead zone. The last point is the rally. In the rally it was very difficult to make any points against the very strong Chris. However, I think that John should have avoided or tried to avoid the strong forehand of Chris. And he should also make better use of his backhand cross and backhand long line balls. At the end, I like to emphasize the importance of the death zone. 
Chris and John have avoided to a large extent to play in the death zone because they play at a high level. An average tennis player, however, plays unfortunately a lot of balls into this zone. This is a typical example for it. If you learn to avoid the death zone and win the points if your opponent plays into this zone, you will gain a lot of extra point which can make the difference. I hope this video has given you a feeling what is possible with the data analysis based on the in-out net device. I'm working on options to make the program available for owners of the in-and-out net device and will come back with an offer.